Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for coming to my video today, which is entitled um, Using the Assassin's Creed's Discovery Tours in the Classroom, a tutorial. Um, I'm so excited about this new format, um, and I hope that you will learn something um, from my presentation today. So here we go. Over the last couple of years, dozens of articles have appeared on the advantages of using the video game series Assassin's Creed as a pedagogical tool in the classroom. However, not one of the articles that you can find on the internet mentions exactly how you can go about it, what specifically you need, what kind of assignments you can offer to the students. Having used the game in a university classroom for the first time myself last year, I wanted to give this presentation as a sort of practical overview or a step-by-step -step manual on how you should set things up and what you can do with the game. I hope this will be helpful as a guide to anyone who is interested in doing the same. And if you still have questions at the end, um, please don't hesitate to get in contact with me um, and I'll see what I can do. So in the winter of 2019, I was approached by Professor Suzanne Lai of the Classics Department at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, um, asking if I wanted to be her graduate consultant student for her upcoming spring class. As a graduate student in the Religious Studies Department at that university, um, Dr. Lai thought that I might be a good fit to help her teach her class, which was entitled Ancient Magic and Religion. To get to know each other, we decided to have a cup of coffee over winter break and discuss the class. During our conversation, it became clear that the class would have a holistic approach to the topic. Not only would there be weekly lectures and articles to read, but the students also needed to write a weekly forum post and a final term paper, and they had to watch a movie. On top of that, they were going to replicate an ancient magical object at the UNC makerspace and present that object in a group presentation. Lastly, they were going to visit the local Ackland Art Museum to visit a temporary exhibition on magic and antiquity to be set up by me and Suzanne. By offering a, var a variety of experiences, Suzanne hoped that the students would develop different skills and they would be able to shine in their strengths. It would also give them an opportunity to approach the past through different media giving them a more complete picture of how magic and religion were understood in ancient Rome, Greece, and Egypt. Finally, at the end of the conversation, Suzanne asked me, so what do you want to get out of this class? What skills do you want to develop? Is there anything you want to try in your pedagogy for this class as my assistant? Well, anybody who knows me knows that I am very interested in the academic possibilities of video games. Um, having organized a session on archaeology of the Near East and video games at Acer now for the past three years, I realized I finally had the opportunity to test this medium in a classroom setting myself. Thus, I asked Suzanne, would I be allowed to integrate the Assassin's Creed's Origins and Assassin's Creed's Odyssey Discovery Tours into our class? The Assassin's Creed Discovery Tours are an add-on mode to the popular role-playing games set in ancient Egypt and ancient Greece, respectively, that allow, allow you to roam these countries without quests or enemies. They basically allow you to walk to the different spaces, be it a house, a temple, pyramid, or agricultural field, as if you are in a wide open air museum. The tours further come in an audio guide, and the possibility to learn more about the buildings or objects that you encounter. Written and designed by historians and archaeologists, they are the closest thing you can get to actually traveling back in time and seeing the ancient cities through your own eyes. This is the experience I wanted to give to your students. And I would here recommend to watch um, Bruno Soltik's presentation in this same um, session to learn more about the background of the Assassin's Creed games and to see more visuals. Um, Bruno is definitely much more tax savvy than me, as you will see in his uh, presentation, so go and check it out. Um, as a first step, I had to convince Dr. Lai. So I took my laptop to her office and I showed her the tours. After seeing the beautiful graphics and the educational possibilities, she was immediately convinced. Not ever having played a video game herself, though, she was not sure how to go about it, but she was excited to have a video game be part of her experimental class. So the next thing that I did was to reach out to people on Twitter. I asked if anybody had any experience using the game in a classroom, and I tagged Ubisoft in my tweet. 
A couple of hours later, Maxime Durand, a production coordinator and historical researcher for Ubisoft, um, reached out to me privately and he gave me his email address. I immediately wrote him an email explaining our plan and our goals for the game. I was especially struggling with the practicalities. I wanted my 25 students to be able to play the game separately in their own time, but how could I make this happen without every student having to buy a state-of-the-art computer and the actual game? Maxime emailed me back the next day to set up a Zoom meeting with me and Suzanne to talk about things further, which we did a couple of days later. So here are a couple of things that we learned. There is a standalone version of the Discovery Tours for PC that can be bought separately for $20 a game. So if you want to do both games, both tours, it will cost you $40. Um, however, this is only possible for PCs and not for consoles like on the Xbox or the PlayStation. For the Xbox and PlayStation, there is no standalone version. So if you want to play on those consoles, you need to buy the entire game which come with a, a Discovery Tour add-on. Um, and each one is sold nowadays for around $50, so $100 for both games. The, this price is per account, so per login on the online Ubisoft gaming platform, like the website, it's called Uplay, um, where you need to log in if you want to play the game on a PC. Um, so different people can play the game on different PCs using the same login information. Um, and the Discovery Tours can be played over and over again by simply resetting them in the game. So the next student who comes afterwards can start from scratch if you just reset the game every single time. Furthermore, Ubisoft unfortunately does currently not have a group sale or a bulk price if you want to buy big quantities of the game. However, they do offer free license keys or logins um, to schools and institutions if you want to use the game for pedagogical purposes. Um, and I have listed on um, the slide also the minimum requirements that a PC would need if you want to play um, those games. During the call with Maxime, he offered us 30 free keys for the Origins tours and 30 for the Odyssey tours. That meant that if a student had access to a PC with the minimum hardware requirements, um, we, could, could, we could give him or her free access to the tools through the Ubisoft website and they could download and play the game in their own room. However, only three of my 25 students in class own such a PC, so we needed another solution. I started to look around on campus um, and the resources that UNC has in order to find enough computers to use. I found three potential places, the Digital Innovation Lab, the eSports Arena, and the UNC Gaming Initiative. At the Digital Innovation Lab, or DIL, we would be allowed to play the game, um, but only together on a big screen. Unfortunately, they did not have multiple PCs that students would be allowed to, to access in their own time. Um, however, this would have been a great space um, if you want to play the game together as a class where one person is in control um, of the game and everybody else watches and you can ask questions and have a discussion, etc. Um, as for the eSports Arena, we learned that they indeed had um, 52 PCs with the latest hardware and that they would have free to play hours for students every day from nine, uh, 4 p.m. to midnight. Unfortunately, at the time of our request, the space was still under construction and it would not be open in time. So we finally reached out to our last option on our list, the UNC Gaming Initiative at the English and Comparative Literature Department. The gaming initiative had just been launched um, that year and included a gaming room which had five playstations and open hours for students to come and play. So we contacted the director, Dr. Courtney Rivert, to set up an appointment and talk about our options. At the meeting, which was also attended by a graduate student and an undergraduate student who were responsible for the oversight in the game room, um, Courtney told us that they had a little bit of funding left. Um, to actually buy the games that professors want to use as part of their class. So we were able to buy five copies of the complete um, Assassin's Creed Origins and five copies of the complete Assassin's Creed Odyssey games um, that we would leave inside the room. We had found our space. Next, we organized an introduction to the game during class time in the gaming room itself. This allowed students to find the room, to see the game for the first time and to ask questions. 
In this session, I gave a short, le short lecture on the background of the games, and we went through the tour, or one of the tours, um, the one set in the Greek house, um, together, as in I was playing on the big screen and they were watching. I told them which buttons to push, how to choose your character, what kind of information in the tour to pay attention to, etc. In the last 10 minutes, um, they were able to choose a PlayStation and experiment with the games themselves while I went around and asked questions or answered questions. I also had them fill out a card with three questions before they left. One, what are you excited about with this game? Two, what are you insecure about? And three, what was the most useful thing you learned today in this lesson? With these questions, I knew what to focus on to help students during the semester, or when I would teach, to teach this game again in the future, what to focus on. Then we handed them their first assignments, which said, go to the gaming room and take the first discovery tour in Odyssey called the Acropolis of Athens. You can go by yourself or in a small group, but each person needs to hold the controller for at least a part of it. Make sure to read the extra information given to you at the end of each station in the tour, which will give you more background information on what you just saw and read, and often shows you an archeological object that was found by real archeologists um, related to the topic. During and after the tour, also feel free to explore the rest of the Acropolis, the buildings, the sanctuaries, the people, etc. Then individually write down your observations about and your reactions to the tour on our online class forum. Note three things you saw, heard or read that were surprising or interesting to you. At least one of those things need to connect with the content of this class. After that, also respond to at least one other student's gaming forum post. With this assignment, we wanted students to feel comfortable holding a controller and navigating the game. We wanted them to get used to the tours and start seeing the advantages of learning about the past through a video game. We also wanted them to pay attention and see if they could find elements in the historical world that connect to the information that they had read in primary and secondary sources. To help them with the controllers, I had designed so-called sheet sheets that explain what each button on the controller does. These sheets were kept in a tray in the gaming room itself and were often actually used by students who felt uncomfortable with a PlayStation controller. We also allowed to play them in, to play in small groups so that people could help each other out when they ran into problems. However, we wanted to make sure that everybody held the controller and played for themselves at least once so that they would feel the freedom of roaming through the landscapes and discovering the past themselves. They were expected to play for at least 1.5 hours during that initial session. After the forum posts were uploaded and graded, we gave them the second assignment. This time we asked, please take two tours in Assassin's Creed Odyssey that are related to your makerspace project, to so the object that they had to make, or specific readings in this class. Then post on the forum, why you chose these tours and how they relate to what you have learned in this class or what you will make. And two, respond to at least one other post. We also told them to pay attention to the following specific questions. Where is a site that you are visiting located in the landscape? In a city or on the countryside? On a hill or along the coast? Why was this space specifically chosen by people, you think? What are the inhabitants doing there? Do you see different tasks being done? Who does what? Think men, women, slaves, children. What kind of tools are they using? Do you recognize all the utensils or devices? What are the tools made of? Do you see examples of magic or religion in this, in this space? This assignment gave them freedom and the specific topics they wanted to learn more about, and it made them pay attention to guided questions. They were also able to explore certain regions themselves, like ancient Crete or the Oracle of Delphi, based on their own personal interests. As a last assignment, we wanted them to play um, Assassin's Creed Origins and know the differences in culture between ancient Greek, uh, Greece and ancient Egypt, especially in regards to magic and religion. However, at that point, um, COVID had come to the US and campus went on lockdown. This meant that our students no longer had access to the gaming room and we, want, and we had to come up with a solution. Luckily, we found YouTube. On these channels given here on the slide, 
you can find videos of all the tours in the game. So students who do not have access to a gaming station can go on YouTube and watch the tours for free. Of course, this is not as ideal as it takes away from the freedom to delve into the world yourself and go look at everything that you find interesting. But it is a good backup solution if you need it. These were all the assignments that we could give them in our time span of about nine weeks. At the end of the semester, I send out a questionnaire to the students to ask about their experience with the game. I specifically wanted to assess if the game had added anything new to their understanding of the ancient world and if this experience was useful at all. Here are a couple of their responses. Student number one. I'm a very visual learner, so this was such a great way to really understand the material that we had been reading about. To be able to take tours of the temples and other places we had been talking about put a lot into perspective. On the tours too, you would see people praying outside the temples and got a feeling for how lively the streets were. I think that I would not have been able to fully grasp what life was like in the ancient world without this experience. Another student. The major factor that made the discovery tours effective was that I was able to see the structures and objects that we discussed in class. Seeing these objects in a realistic, realistic setting made it much, much, much more easy to contextualize what we have learned. And the last student, being able to experience the ancient world in first person made the facts that I was learning about in this class more visible. And I think I was able to understand the concepts better after I, I experienced them firsthand. The complexity of the cities in the game allowed me to see ancient civilizations as more than just abstract concepts but as people who actually existed at one point. Seeing cities in full color with people going about their lives was a much more lifelike experience than what could have been achieved by just reading about them. All in all, I think the experiment was a success. New students were open and willing to give this new tool a try, while students who were already familiar with video games thought it was so cool that they could play as, as homework. Female students were more apprehensive about the concept than male students, but once they got used to the controller, they were just as successful in navigating the game. In the end, the most difficult part was to figure out how to get students to have access to the game. But once that was figured out, the rest went smoothly. And we can now go ahead and make this game an integral part of the class in every semester. For many students in class, this was the first course that they ever took on the ancient world. And so they had no idea what to imagine that these ancient spaces looked like. In my opinion, the video games are the perfect segue into these worlds. Students told me that the games sparked in them a further interest in the ancient world, which is all I could hope for.